Two weeks after having the printer, I'm finally ready to actually make a review of it or kind of discuss the printer in general. Now, first of all, I guess, uh, well, I'm gonna put this into two parts. The first part will be about the uh, 3D, 3D printing. The second part will be about the printer. And the third part will be about some of the things I printed. I said there would be two, two parts, I guess that's three. But the first part, I'm not gonna talk a lot about 3D printing uh, as a whole because I don't know that much about it. I'm kind of really learning on the fly. So there's other videos that kind of discuss that in more better detail. I can tell you, if you're completely new at it, um, it's just printing in layers. We have the 2D printers, really, your inkjet printers, and now you know, somewhere along the line, people thought, well, we could print on layers. Um, as a kid, I always played with a cardboard and glue and um, masking tape were my three ingredients, and I tried to make stuff, but I was so limited by what that I could actually do. Nowadays, I just think, uh, well, I mean, this current day, today, it's just amazing what you can do with a 3D printer. So if you had to visualize it, I would say it's sort of like, you know, icing coming out of a you know, icing package, whatever they call it, and just going around the cake and adding a layer after layer, or like an ice cream cone, a soft serve, how that kind of spins around and just gets taller after time. More calories though, of course, more calories. So what it does, I mean, it takes what's called a filament, this is a filament, uh, a little bit of a, pla basically plastic on a spool and goes through um, an injection nozzle and basically does what that little ice cream icy thing does. Uh, these things, these little guys can range in cost. I don't know, this spool was about $25 because it's a special filament. This makes a rubbery kind of bendable prints. Um, the main one, I think, is ABS. ABS is the cheapest, that's what they make Legos out of. That's uh, that, uh, a big spool of that, I think. This one is uh, $20, and you can get a lot of prints out of that if they're, you know, not too big. But um, small little guys, I'd say about hand, little, tiny little plastic figurine, I think he's probably about a quarter, maybe. I haven't done the math. I could do the math, but I'm not gonna do the math. Interesting note about these uh, filaments is that they, I mean, when you start and you get into the detail level, and you kind of want to keep learning about that, because the more you know, uh, the better your prints will be. Uh, this little guy, uh, and most of the guys, they are sensitive to moisture in the air. So as the, now it's summer right now. Is it still summer? I think it's still summer. But as we turn into fall, it gets rainy. I think the outside elements are really going to affect the printing because, um, uh, the, well, I'll talk about the printer later, but if the printer's not caged, then it makes a difference. But I think we've covered everything about 3D printing that I can say. And again, there's sites that'll give you all the details. I don't got them. You know, I just, I'm learning as I go. I have two weeks of knowledge now. All right, part two, the printer, the printer. Uh, of course, when I decided to get a printer, and I'll tell you why later, uh, there was a lot of choices. There's a lot of different ones, but they've come down in price so much. Um, the one I particularly chose was the Ender 3. Lots of reviews. The reviews said, uh, mostly all said great things about it, but it was the price that did it. Caveat, the Ender 3 must be sort of put together. And when I say it's about, they say it's about 50% disassembled, I guess. I mean, you're not soldering things. You're not doing anything like that. You're mainly plugging in things and putting, yeah, I mean, it's like here. Screws, little things like that, screws and clips. I mean, it's not, the instructions could have been better. There are, it falls short in places, but overall, I, I think it's okay. So I, um, it took me about two hours to put it together. I even did a time-lapse video. So two hours, that's not a bad amount of time. Uh, and it was worth it because the price, I think it was like 175. Um, they all come from China, but they're kind of imported here. There's a middleman, you buy it from them. Um, it took about a week to come and uh, yeah, 175. That's not all you're gonna spend. You're gonna be spending the money on upgrades too. So uh, those are the things we'll talk about next. All right, even before upgrades, um, there's uh, printing as is. The first thing I printed was the um, default file that came on a flash drive and well, it was a mess. It was just an exploded mess of uh, filaments. I don't think it was that bad, but I have prints that have gone that bad. But uh, you can't print at all unless you have, uh, like I said, filament. So the filament I have, I have a few different ones. I have the ABS from Amazon A6, and that was like $20 for a kilogram. This is a special one. This is called uh, uh, Polymaker PC, uh, PC Max, so polycarbonate. It's supposed to be a very, very hard filament, a lot more expensive. I think this was like $45. So yeah, the printer's cheap, but depending on what you want to print, that's where the prices are gonna start going up a bit. 
So again, this one's $20, that's not bad. What does it come with? It comes with about two yards maybe worth of, I imagine this is probably ABS, it might be PLA. Um, the types of filaments, I probably won't get into detail on that, but you can look that up, but the PLA. So technically for that $175 and about two hours of time, you can start printing. And it comes with a, you know, a card too, a SD card, so mini micro SD card, yeah. And so as far as the printer itself, what do we got here? Um, well, we got, a nice little printer. I mean, it's open air, so um, it is gonna be sensitive to the elements, which can make a difference, especially on larger prints. It comes with a uh, print bed, hot bed. Now, this little guy, not sure of the material. It seems like a kind of plastic. Maybe it's a plastic and aluminum, not sure. Um, but it does the job. One of the first things they tell you is to upgrade to glass. So one of the first things I did was follow the advice upgraded to uh, bro something glass and the bro something glass I think has been printing a little better. <sighs> Prints lifting off the glass, those kind of problems, that's still, uh, for me, I'm still learning about that kind of stuff. So that's probably gonna happen and it's not fun, especially like halfway into a print or three quarters of the way into a print. It just you know, drives you crazy. Everything on my uh, table here has to do with the 3D printing except for the uh, glass of port, which just has to do with a slight inebriation. Then one of the next things they'll tell you to upgrade is to get a get Octoprint. What is Octoprint? What do you mean? Octoprint is a small Raspberry Pi computer. I mean, really, it's just the Raspberry Pi, but you've loaded certain software on it called uh, Octoprint. And Octoprint, or Octopi, whatever you want to call it, allows you to not have to run back and forth um, between you and your computer to keep getting the prints on it. So you just basically upload and download straight to the uh, Raspberry Pi, in which case it connects to the printer. Um, and the other thing about it is if you have a webcam, you can record your prints. You can do a time lapse of the prints. You can monitor them. So you, know, you can wake up in the middle of the night and want to see how your print's going. You can actually just look online and see it and you can control everything there. It's just really good to have. Um, so that was one of the best things. I already had, for me, I had the Raspberry Pi. So that was kind of cool. I even 3D printed a little case for the webcam because it didn't have anything when I bought it, which has always been a kind of a problem. Problem solved. Now some of the other things that comes with are the tools. This is a little spatula, um, and I don't know, it kind of even seems like this is almost 3D printed, but it's probably not. Most things are injection molded, um, but it cleans, cleans the hotbed glass. Very important, used all the time. A nifty pair of uh, wire cutters, or yeah, I think I would call it kind of wire cutters. They do a great job. I use this all the time. And that was kind of cool of them to throw in. Again, 175 is kind of a real baseline price. Comes with all the tools you need to build the printer. Uh, those come in handy. And the rest are tools that I just find are useful. So if you get one, you want to know about that. Um, let's just talk about optional tools and accessories. Needle nose pliers. Needle nose pliers, they come in handy all the time for little things to kind of make adjustments. I use those. Um, scissors, of course, for cutting things. Uh, in fact, if you're cutting the filament, you probably want to use those little uh, uh, wire cutters, but uh, this comes in handy sometimes. Exacto knife uh, for kind of cutting and trimming or taking off the supports. I don't recommend using these without gloves because one slip up and it's going into your fingers. Magnifier 8x kind of sometimes helps see what those details look like. Isoprobal alcohol to wipe off the hot bed. You got to kind of clean it between prints, especially if you use Aquanet. They recommend hairspray just generic Aquanet hairspray to kind of spray. They have name brand ones, but you spray the, the hot bed, it helps the uh, print stick. A little extra thing I bought was called digital uh, caliper. A digital caliper really comes in handy if you're measuring things to be 3D printed, especially things that have to kind of go together and you don't know the size. Compressed air, really. Good to have, just um, keep in mind that it does come out cold and you don't want to spray it on something that the temperature is going to be adjusted during the printing. So keep bear that in mind, not that I did it. Uh, measuring tape, and um, in this world everything is in millimeters, so you definitely want to make sure you uh, are taking that into consideration. Millimeters. And a pen, even though it's not a pen, a more useful pen would be one of those ones that kind of writes almost like in white out, so it has that little bit of white paint and because it's hard to see what this goes on, the black filament. That's it for the printer and supplies. Now let's talk about what I did with it. What have I printed? I'm glad I asked. 
first thing was uh, a little zombie action figurine. He, um, it was for like a board game and we, could, we needed some more pieces and I thought, wouldn't it be cool? This was what I had in mind before I even bought the printer. Wouldn't it be cool to print it? So I downloaded it and I printed it and it turned out pretty darn well. It's the second one. This one is made of polycarbonate. Huh. I was gonna say it's really, really tough, but the legs are not quite, again, it's not gonna be as uh, hard as injection molding, even though, yeah, I guess he will break up. And I wasn't gonna do anything in particular. I can glue it back together again, but live on the air, we broke him. Ah, that's kind of sad, but I, was, I needed to know how strong it really is. Another one of my projects was to replace a, a twisty knob that goes on, um, what is it, a washing machine, a washing machine. So it broke off, it no longer twisted, and by doing it by hand was a pain. So why not 3D print it? 3D print it. There were a lot of uh, failures, of course. I tried, I uh, got like a little, uh, I don't know. Well, when you print in the low def mode, low resolution, coarse mode, you're gonna get stringier prints. Um, I tested out the polycarbonate at one time and it was like hard as a rock. And there were ones that were too big, too small, one that cracked open that was ABS. The black is ABS, the white is uh, polycarbonate. The, the white one actually turned out real good and it is strong as a, a rock. I mean, I can't, I can't break this one even if I try, which is odd because the legs, the little legs broke right off, but this thing, I'm not breaking this if I tried. Well, I am trying, I'm not breaking this. Um, but it was too big, so and at that I just cannot, I can't drill that out or do anything. It's just too big. I actually did stop that project because I ended up printing a sample just to go around the knob, and it, it's not a full knob, it's just it kind of extrudes a little, but it's perfect. It works, you can twist it, and I thought, why go on? It actually is fine. Now we talked about that printing stand for the webcam, there were several problems with that. There was a, uh, gosh, I printed that a lot. I printed a prototype, and then the, they kept lifting off the, the bed. When you print with uh, the black on the glass, when you print on the glass bed, um, you can get a nice, soft, very shiny surface. It's really cool, but again, the problem is it starts to lift off the bed, and then, well, it ruins the print at that point. Uh, everything just goes, because it's too bad, because I thought that's kind of cool to have that shiny black plastic. Well, it's no good if it can't finish the job. And finally, one of the big things I was doing was printing a, a case sort of to hold the battery, electric battery, or the battery on my electric bike. So I printed out basically many, many samples, very small ones, ones kind of stringy, to show how, or to kind of see how it fits, because it was very hard to measure, because the battery's on the bike, and the, the bike is the bike. It's just hard to measure. So I printed out small ones where I didn't lose too much time and money and just grew each time a bigger and bigger print until finally the final product is sitting on the bike and I think it does a pretty good job. There's even like little loopholes for uh, a plastic or elastic band to go around um, and secure everything in place. So that was kind of a successful print quite happy about that and um, yeah now now I just gotta find more things to print. The 3D prints don't quite get as hard as uh, like I said they're not gonna be up to the level of the same filament in an injection molding machine because like this came with uh, a tire pump or a patch kit or something anyway um, it works extremely well I'm just amazed at that it's plastic but I mean it is very very strong I mean it's a wedge basically or a lever lever um, but anyway I can't I can't break this but if I think if I printed it with 3d plastic or a 3d printer I probably could so just to bear that in mind it's hard to get up to the same levels again things can and do still break how did I do this I broke his legs off eh. oh well I mean I could make thicker legs I suppose if I had to but that's it that is the 3d printer and I've kind of covered everything I wanted to cover and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below uh, until then, happy 3D printing if you do decide to get one. And if you do, let me know how it goes.